Dave here, how are you? Look what I've got here. This is a 20 millimeter power lock dog from TSO Products. These are going to change the way you use perforated worktops. And in my situation, this is a torsion box as well, so I cannot get to the underside to do a conventional style of dog and bolt to lock it in position. I'm going to show you all about it. The clever thing about these TSO power lock dogs is they have an off-center stainless steel bolt with a five millimeter hex socket. Use a five millimeter hex driver to activate it. Now, watch it while I turn it counterclockwise and then I turn it clockwise. I'm going to turn it around this way so you can see it even better. You're very excited, aren't you? What that means is this post is stopping a full rotation. As I turn clockwise, it brings this section of the power lock dog out past the 20 millimeter cylinder. When I turn it counterclockwise, it brings it back within the cylinder. And that is the big secret. So now if I was to put this power lock dog into here, into this particular bench, and then turn it clockwise and try and raise it up, I can't. Turn it counterclockwise, out it comes. That is brilliant. What application? Glad you asked. If I put this power lock dog in the 20 millimeter hole in this jig holder and push it down and then turn it clockwise, You can see how strong it's got it. Now I can put them in the other ones as well and then have it all held securely all the way around. But I'm just showing you the one there so you can see what it's like. Now getting it out is pretty easy. Counterclockwise until it's all the way. And so you'll see it start to turn in the hole there. You can see it's starting to rotate. Now I can either just slip the thumbnail under it and raise it or I could just lift the jig once it's been that little leg has come back within the cylinder. These are great. All right, now I can use that here. I can use it on my Stanton bench. You can use it on a Ron Polk bench as well if you want to, or a Festool MFT3. Anything that's got 20 millimeter dog holes in it. It has 10 millimeters of travel in that section. So it can travel 10 millimeters. That means I can hold two pieces of wood or plywood or MDF together, whatever I've got, between 30 and 40 millimeters. That's the distance between there and this little flange. Now, if you want it to be really, really nice in your board and have it disappear, what you can do is you can create a chamfer like I have on my bench here. And then that little flange will sit in it. You have to do it deep enough so this goes just below the surface. And it's going to be magic. Got this board here. And it has a 96 millimeter regular dog hole pattern, 20 millimeters diameter. And I can make jigs. I could make a little trim router table. This is my little trim router with an acrylic top on it. I could cut out an area there and rebate it, and drop this into it. And then I could have a very quick and good trim router table right there. Let's pop one of these in. There we go. Back there. Like so. And another one here. Like so couple of turns. This top is 22 millimeters thick. This is 18. So 22 and 18, 40. Now they, the TSO say you don't tight, have to tighten them up too much. It's not going anywhere. That would be very, very safe for me to have a trim router mounted out here. 
What I could do is I could also put a fence, maybe an 18 millimeter thick plywood fence for the trim router as well and secure it at one end and then just have a clamp at the other and I could pivot it like so. You're going to find so many uses for these things it's going to blow you away. <laughs> All right there are affiliate links in the description box below this video. If you want to get some of these do me a favor and use the link. If you enjoy my videos please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ring that little bell, tell your friends and keep on coming back. I'll see you next time. Bye. Taking it out is going to be the question isn't it? Wasn't too hard, was it? Look at that. Love them.